All right. Okay, so let me welcome you at uh, yet another seminar of our research group where Edward Iban will tell us something about removing connected obstacles in the plane. So, Edward, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, as uh, Dushan already said, I will tell you something about removing connected obstacles in the plane. And this is joint word with uh, work with Daniel Lakshtanov. Uh, and if you have some question during the talk, you can just, just ask uh, either in chat. Uh, I might be monitoring it, but if, you, uh, if I don't see the question, just uh, you can also voice it uh, uh, by voice. Okay, so let me, let me start uh, by starting with a, a problem we are studying. So basically, uh, what, uh, what is the question? What is the setting? Uh, we have some obstacles in the plane. These obstacles are basically some kind of a, a closed uh, subsets of a, of a plane, uh, something, something like this, this pink, uh, like this, this pink uh, thing here. They can have, they can have holes in them and, uh, and so on. Uh, and the question is, given these obstacles and some two, two given points, S, S, and T, uh, we want to find some good path from, from S to T. Uh, and a good path is the one that intersect as little obstacles as possible. And it can intersect, once it intersects some obstacle, it can intersect it as many times as it wants. So basically this question is also at one to asking how many obstacles we need to remove such that there is an obstacle free a path between these two points. And for example, in this setting, a path like this, this, this uh, red one would intersect only, only this green obstacle here and this uh, purple obstacle here. So for this case, we can remove just uh, two obstacles and find a path between uh, S and T that does not intersect any obstacle or, or alternatively, uh, this red path between S and T intersects only two obstacles. Okay, so I hope the setting is clear. And this uh, problem is uh, rather well motivated with motivation coming from two different areas and was actually even introduced as a, as a problem in two different areas. So in motion planning, basically goal is to, to move some some robot from one place to, to the other place uh, with intersecting as few or colliding with as few obstacles as possible. This is uh, especially when we have a, a 3D uh, robot or at least at least a two-dimensional robot. This is often referred to as a piano mover uh, problem. Our setting is a little bit more simplified. First, it's just in the plane. And second, our robot is uh, is just a point, but uh, usually in piano mover we actually don't want to uh, don't want to cross any obstacles and we are allowed to cross them a bit. And the pro the this problem in the motion planning setting was uh, studied under the name minimum constraint removal in uh, set uh, in the sensor network it was also studied with the following application. So basically here, each sensor uh, covers some, some region or some area. This is usually unit disk, but it can be also general disks or can be uh, any, any other kind of uh, obstacles. And basically the idea here is that these sensors are guarding some, some object. Uh, so you can imagine that you have a, uh, you have some kind of a, a gallery or something you have some expensive painting that you want to guard and you want to know, uh, you want to set, you want to, you have a setup of your sensors and you want to know how many sensors needs to break such that there actually is a path that can be undetected between the, the beginning and, uh, and the end. So between the entrance to your uh, gallery and the objects you are, you are guarding. And this is basically more from point of view of an of an attacker. Which so which uh, sensors you you should uh, you should uh, break. 
And in this setting, the problem was uh, studying under the name bio coverage or uh, bio resilience. And just to point out, uh, if uh, in, in, in our setting, if there exists a path that does not cross any obstacle or, or if we don't need to remove any obstacle, this problem is actually solvable in polynomial time. This, is, uh, this, this was uh, known even before. Uh, for, for our setting, it will be, especially for our, our algorithm, it will be much simpler to think about this problem or at least for us, it was much simpler to think about this problem as a graph problem. And uh, we can obtain uh, a bit more general graph problem or instance of a, of a, a, a graph problem instead of uh, the one with obstacles in plane as follows. So we uh, look at all the regions that are introduced uh, by uh, these obstacles. So basically, we look on the boundaries on, on, all, uh, on all obstacles and uh, look uh, how they inter introduce some faces or uh, regions in the plane. We place a vertex inside uh, each, inside each uh, region, right? So for example, here we have a region that is intersection of this, of this green and this pink, pink uh, this green, this pink and this uh, yellow uh, obstacles. And we place this vertex in here. And we put an edge between uh, two regions if they share some boundary of some, of some obstacle, right? So uh, here, this, this region for this vertex and this vertex, they share this boundary here, so there is an edge between them. Okay, and now we also associate uh, uh, every, every obstacle with uh, some color. And we associate every vertex with a color set such that uh, a color set of a, of a vertex is basically the set of obstacles that uh, create this uh, those intersection crazy region, right? So, for example, for this vertex, we'll have three colors: uh, yellow, uh, green, and pink. And there are also some vertices that do not have uh, any color, and we call such vertices empty vertices. So, S is empty empty vertex. Here is empty vertex. T is empty vertex, and so on. Now, uh, for for a path in for a path from S to T, or for actually for any path in this graph, we say that this path is k-valid if it uses Edmonds k colors, meaning that the union of the colors on all the vertices of the path uh, is at most the size of this union is at most k. And the problem can be kind of a generalized into problem on a vertex color planar graph. Here, here, the vertex color means that every vertex can have a set of colors instead of just, just one color. And we have uh, two vertices S and T. And the question is whether there is a, a K valid ST path in G. Now, uh, as this is a little bit more general than what we can get from the instances of our, of our original problem, especially all the instances of our original problem satisfy some additional property called the uh, color connectivity property. And this is that every color in the graph, the set of vertices uh, on which the color appears and this is a connected subgraph. And this is because we have uh, obstacles that were, that were connected, uh, which means that if we look on all the regions that, uh, uh, that we got, uh, from the intersections with this one obstacle, they will be they will be connected. And uh, actually, we will be always assuming that we not only have a, a planar graph G, but we actually have plane graph. So we will uh, fix some uh, embedding into into the plane always uh, in in our algorithms. And uh, basically. We are mostly interested in this uh, connected obstacle removal. 
so the setting where the obstacles are connected and our algorithm is only for the connected obstacle removal but i will mention also some related work with the uh, obstacle removal okay so before i i get to the algorithm let me mention some related work so as far as i know the problem was first introduced by Kumar Lion Aurora, who studied it from the wireless computing, so from the sensor network's point of view. Uh, they studied mostly the Unidiff obstacles, and they show that for some particular setting of the, of the unit disk in, in the plane, there is a polynomial time algorithm, but for general settings of the, of the unit disk, uh, the problem still remains open. So it still remains open whether there is a polynomial algorithm if all obstacles are just unit disks uh, or not. And in the setting of the of the unit disk, later Berg and Kirkpatrick showed that uh, the shortest, the length of the shortest uh, uh, here I say K, K resilient, but this is basically K valid in the in the auxiliary in this in this graph. Uh, for unit disk is always at most 3k, right? So this, this is basically, if I remember correctly, they show that if you have unit unit disks, then the path from, from S to T never needs to intersect any uh any unit disk more than more than three times. And based on based on this result, uh Corman et al. gave actually FPT algorithm for unit disk case. So it's still not known whether it's polynomial or or, or NP-hard, but uh, to get closer to this to this uh, to answer this question, they gave FPT algorithm. And uh, for 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 the from the negative side, uh, all that I'll show that the problem is NP-hard even when the objects are just uh, line segments. And no free line segment intersecting at the same point, right? So we so the setting is we have just just any any line lines configuration of some line segments, and you have uh, these vertices S and T, and you want to just remove the line segments, and the problem is already already MP hard there, and it is even MP hard when when all line segments have a unit length. Uh, we, with uh, Gemal Kanch and uh, Yugdal, gave some exact and heuristic algorithms. Uh, it's not that uh, not yet uh, important the running times or or what exactly where the algorithm we did gave some. And with Iad, we also gave FPT algorithm parameterized by k plus k plus trivet and k plus length of the optimal path, which actually generalizes this. Uh, this algorithm by uh, Corman. So the idea is completely different, but it greatly generalizes that one because the, the main idea for Corman was also show that to start from the setting that you need, that the optimal length of the optimal path is at most three times K. Uh, there was also some work on approximation. So in the same paper where they show that you only need to intersect uh, Every unit is at most three times. Uh, they actually gave uh, free approximation for the problem, uh, and even two approximation in some uh, special special cases. And this two approximation was later even improved to one point five approximation. Ayapahai uh, et al. gave APX hardness for the problem, and some O of square root of of n approximation for some settings like rectilinear polygons, general disks, and also for the general graph problem. And very recently, uh, this year at SODA, uh, Kumar et al. gave a constant factor approximation for actually for the graph problem. But I think they didn't actually specify what's the constant, and this is still. Uh, open to get some some reasonable one but the algorithm gives some some constant uh, for the general problem it was also also study 
And here it was more studied from the kind of a, a robotics point, point of view. And uh, I think Hauser was the first one to, to study it, uh, the general one, and showed MP hardness VR reduction from set cover. And the set cover was actually FPT reduction showing W2 hardness for the obstacle removal. They also gave some uh, several heuristic algorithms. Later, Gorbenko and Popov uh, even proposed some additional heuristic algorithm based on reduction to SAT. So basically, they encoded a problem in, in, in SAT and did some uh, experimental evaluation of uh, how well this, uh, this works. And with EAD, we actually extended this, this W hardness to even much higher in the W hierarchy to actually W sub hardness. And not only for the exact algorithm, but actually to get F of K approximation. And finally, in the same uh, soda paper, uh, Kumar et al gave uh, these kind of uh, very high approximation lower bounds uh, so this is the lower bound on approximation ratio, uh, where M, M is the number of colors and N is the number of vertices of, the, of this uh, graph. And this approximation is, is under uh, dense versus random, random conjecture, which I actually didn't, didn't check uh, what the conjecture uh, states, but uh, uh, they gave this kind of lower bounds. Okay, so for the... Rest of the talk, uh, let me sketch a little bit our algorithm. So our result is that this connected obstacle removal is fixed parameter tractable by uh, K, so number of colors that uh, needs to be removed or uh, number of obstacles that needs to, needs to be removed. And uh, to get to our algorithm, we start by looking on a structure of some of some optimal uh, path from, from S to T. All right, so let imagine that this is uh, some path from S to T. And we have on, on the vertices of the path, we have some color sets, uh, right? So here we have uh, color one, here we have color uh, two, three, and so on and so on. And now what we can do, we can split this path into parts depending on how, how many colors we seen on the path so far, right? So this is the, the last vertex where we, where we have seen uh, one color, right? Now here we have seen color, up to here we have seen colors uh, one, two, three. So three colors, the same for here. We just seen three colors so far. At this point, we see two more new colors. So up to this point, we've seen five. And this is this, we are the same five colors we even have up to here. Here we see for the first time sixth color, then here for the first and seventh color. And uh, with this seventh color, we can already uh, reach, the, uh, reach the final vertex D. Now, this kind of introduces to us uh, K plus one important vertices, including S and T. And these vertices are basically uh, for each for each i between uh, one to k minus one to k. Uh, we can have the the last vertex that is reached by i colors, right? So uh, this is the last vertex that is reached by one color, but also it is the last vertex vertex that is reached by just two colors, right? Because the next vertex needs uh, three colors. This is the last vertex reached by three, but also four colors. Last vertex reached by five, by six, and then uh, always T will be the last vertex reached by K colors. And now basically our algorithm kind of uh, tries to discover all possibilities for, uh, for I uh, important vertex. In each in each uh, round, so it proceeds in in k rounds, starting from uh, one and so on. 
and uh, basically what we what we are trying to do for every vertex in the graph we want to say okay if this vertex is this important vertex uh, for, for for i for uh, i colors in the i uh, uh, um, on this on this path yeah so if this so for example if we say okay if this vertex is the fifth important vertex then can we kind of uh, compute all uh, all possible so kind of a, a possible ways how we can reach this vertex such that this number of possible ways is not too not too big and uh, whatever comes next so whatever our uh, our rest of our paths how our rest of our paths looks like we can actually replace what we had in the optimal path by one of these one of these possibilities so basically uh, we want to kind of have a set of paths paths like uh, this colored path here such that if we if we replace our our original black path from s to v by one of one of them then we can actually then we still have uh, um uh, a good, uh, we still have a k valid path, so a path that uses n minus k colors. And uh, notice here I actually say a representative family of color sets of size i, and that is because uh, it is it was very beneficial for us to go between color sets of the path and the paths, right? So uh, if we have a path from from s to v, it has some color set, and we are not we don't really completely care whether uh, from S to V, we used exactly this path. We only care that we used exactly these colors. And uh, we can always, from a path, computing the color set of the path, that's easy. You just look on all the vertices and take the union of the colors. And the other way around, if we have a, a color set from which we can, such that using these colors, we can reach from S to V, then we can just use our favorite algorithm for finding uh, a path between two vertices, for example, uh, breadth for search, and use it only on the graph that, contain, that does not contain any vertex with a different color than uh, the color in our, uh, in our set. Right? So we can go uh, back and forth between just a color set uh, of size i, so color set with i colors, and uh, uh, and a path uh, that contains such color sets. And to define our representative families, it was uh, better to do it with uh, color sets. Right. Now, if we have such such representative family for every vertex for all j smaller than i, then actually computing one for exactly i is relatively simple. So what we need to do, if we go through all the vertices and all the representative uh, families we have there. And now, because we are kind of as, assuming, okay, this was the last important vertex, we just look on all the, all the neighbors of this vertex and try to include the color set of the of the neighbor to uh, to some color set in one of the representative families that we use to reach this reach this vertex, and then we just compute all the vertices that can be reached by this by this new larger color set, if this color set was of size r. But the problem is that uh, they can be actually a lot of ways or lots of color set to reach some vertex, which means that we cannot we cannot be keeping all of all of these uh, all, all of these that we discovered this way, all of course that we discovered this way, and we need to somehow reduce their number. So, uh, what can happen, right? So, what is the the bad situation? The path from from S to V can look uh, something like this, which is we have it's kind of a path of a, of a diamonds, and we can in each diamond we can pick a different different vertex to go through, 
and this picks a different color, which means that uh, it it should be easily seen that this can uh, become XP. So the number of possible paths, number of possible cores that we can reach uh, from S to V can be uh, XP, right? So it can, uh, but the one thing that uh, kind of is then important is that if you are going through some path somewhere somewhere in the in the middle, then kind of uh, if we want to repeat repeat the the color that is on this path again later, then this color kind of always needs to appear on on a sep on a separator between the two. So that will be kind of a way how we can identify uh, some useless useless paths, right? So we will, we will be able to show that if we have uh, such path that maybe maybe taking taking uh, maybe this path could be always better or, or something like that. right So let us uh, show basically, Let's look what we actually showed. So what we actually showed is uh, is the following uh, lemma. So now we can now we can fix a, a vertex, and right? uh, we fix we fix i. Uh, so we fix the the round in which we are, and we fix some color sets, some set set some family of color sets. Uh, that can be used to reach to reach this vertex v from the starting position, and each of these color sets has size has size exactly i. Now, what we are able able to show that if this color set is large enough, so larger than uh, k to the o, k to the o of k cubed, then we can find uh, one color set in this in this family. That is kind of uh, irrelevant or uh, redundant, and that we can remove from the family, and uh, we still we still can replace uh, this color set with something better. Now there there were some technicalities because for this p we are assuming that uh, it is that if we are using this this p then this vertex v is important. And we are not assuming it for p prime, but uh, we could uh, taking some kind of extremal path. We we could have uh, we were able to to still uh, say that we are still keeping this property, and uh, this is not uh, this technicality is not uh, important for for this talk. It's just uh, I need to mention that that there is a technicality that needed to be uh, overcome. Right. And basically, the main idea, so the, the kind of a most important idea uh, we needed to, uh, to, prove this, to prove this lemma was instead of trying to find uh, this redundant color set or this irrelevant color set in the whole P, so in the whole uh, family, we actually restrict ourselves to some uh, subfamily of, uh, of this family for which we can uh, show that it's kind of structured, where the structure will, will be clearer a bit, a bit later in the talk. And using this kind of a structured, uh, structured family, it, it is much easier to actually identify an ir irrelevant color set in the structured family. And because it is just a subfamily of, of, of P, and we can find uh, a replacement for this redundant color set already in the subfamily. Then we can find a replacement even in the in the whole family. So the for the first kind of a structural restriction, we use a famous sunflower lemma. So basically, given some some set each of the same size. Here I say K, but uh, we actually 
we wanted to say i right because that's the that's the size of our of all of our color sets the sunflower uh, so these these color sets form a sunflower if there exists some some set c such that intersection of pairwise intersection of all pairs in the set is exactly is exactly c and uh, the famous sunflower lemma by Erdos and Rado says that, that if the family contains at least uh, this many uh, sets of size k, then it contains a sunflower with uh, at least uh, L sets. And uh, notice that uh, we have we have our family our family P has k to k okay, to all of uh, k cubed uh, many sets of size of size i which is smaller than k which means that it will have a sunflower of size k to all of k squared okay so the first step is we find such a sunflower and we only restrict ourselves to finding an irrelevant uh, an irrelevant color set in this uh, sunflower. And once, once we have all the sets intersecting precisely in some color set C, now we can actually show that uh, because we are only looking for ir irrelevant uh, uh, a color set in, inside of these color sets, then we can completely remove uh, the colors in C from the whole graph. And if we can find a, a, a redundant color set in there, then we can then the one that we obtain from uh, then the one basically the irrelevant color, color set uh, in this in this new after removing C plus C will be the irrelevant uh, in the original one. Right. Uh, so we can remove. All the colors in C completely from the instance, and uh, look only on the instance without C. And uh, one other observation we had is that uh, now this removing of C can introduce uh, vertices that uh, are adjacent and have exactly same color set. So, so this is, uh, and in this case, we can just contract uh, these two vertices to just one vertex. And if we had SV path uh, or ST path using some colors uh, before contraction, then we have it after construction and, and uh, vice versa. So from now on, we will assume that our, our family of color sets contains only pairwise disjoint color sets. And that uh, in in our graph there are no pair of vertices such that uh, they are adjacent and they have exactly same color set. And this is for us this is mainly important for saying that uh, if we have an empty vertex, then all the all the neighbors of this empty vertex are colored, so have at least one color. Now. What we actually do, we go back from the uh, from the color sets that we that we needed, especially to get to the setting with this joint color set. We go back to actually pass to, to actually as we pass, and for each uh, each color set in this our in our family, we actually uh, compute some as we pass uh, with exactly Q colors, and uh, even though. It is not guaranteed that uh, that a BFS would find uh, the one that contains a path that contains exactly Q colors. It could find one that contains less. But in this case, we we will we are, we were able to argue that uh, basically we can remove uh, we can remove this uh, this color set because we were we dealt with it in, in some previous uh, in some previous round. Uh, so we can we can assume that all paths that we found use exactly uh, 
uh, I many I many colors. Okay, and now here here uh, so this is how it kind of kind of looks like. And now here was here was the important thing that I was saying. So all of these paths are color disjoint because they all contained S. S is uh, empty uh, empty vertex, so it doesn't contain any any color, which means that the first vertex of of uh, every path, so uh, actually second after S on every path, have to contain a color, and because the paths are uh, color disjoint, then each for on each path has its own second vertex of the path, and we can order them depending on a on a rotation uh, around S in this plane plane graph that we that we are given. Okay, and now we want to further restrict our paths, and we want to find something something like this, which is we want to find kind of a small small set of uh, universal vertices that will be on every path. And we would like to have uh, all the remaining paths. So all the paths uh, intersecting only in these universal vertices in exactly the same order and not intersecting anywhere else. We will not uh, get exactly the same setting, but what we will, what we will get, we will, we will, we will have uh, basically show that we have kind of this kind of onion uh, structure. So basically, between each, so we will we will have small set of these universal vertices, it will be at most at most two k, and between any consecutive, all the paths. Uh, so they will be enough. There will be large number of uh, paths that are that do not intersect between S and and U one. Large number of paths that do not intersect between. U1 and, and U2 and so on. And this will help us to identify some one path that is very far from T that cannot share any color with, with, a, with a VT path. So let us uh, look what we actually actually show. So we actually show uh, first that uh, for every for every path, so sorry, that we can find a restriction Q2, so subset Uh, subset of uh, Q1 and some universal set U of size at most at most 2k, such that every path intersects all vertices of U and in the same order. And for all the remaining vertices in the graph, at most some small fraction of all paths contain this vertex. Uh, to find to find this, it wasn't actually too difficult. You are just Always trying to include uh, the vertex, the vertex V, uh, or vertex W to you that intersects the most number of paths, and only restrict to this path that contains this. Uh, and you stop once all the vertices intersects only this fraction. And uh, we are able to show that if we if we use two k plus one steps. Then, if at two k plus first step there is still a vertex that intersects a large fraction of the, of the of the paths, then actually one of these paths have to have k plus one colors, which is not possible. Okay, so once we once we have this setting, so once we have that every path, so we find we found this this u and this subset of colors. Uh, of color sets of, of this family Q2, such that every path intersects all vertices in U in the same order. And every other vertex of the graph con is contained only on the small fraction of the, of the path. Uh, we can now focus basically what's happening between two consecutive uh, U vertices in U, right? So because we have only only two k such consec consecutive uh, parts of a, of a path, 
and uh, every path in our set uh, traverses these uh, consecutive paths in the same order. And now, so now we fix some one one part between them. Now we fix actually the ordering on the on the paths depending on how they uh, how again again UI is again empty vertex right because again uh, it had it cannot it is on at least two paths that are color disjoint so it cannot contain any color uh, so again we can order the paths depending on the first vertex after after UI and basically the thing what we show is that now if we look at the two paths that are far apart in this in this ordering then they cannot they cannot uh, intersect so basically what we show is two things is first if uh, we look at any two vertices and we look at any curve between them then uh, any curve between them such that it intersects our our paths only in the vertices that are not ui or ui plus one then it has to intersect at least some some large number of uh, of vertices and that is because if we if we look at this thing here that's a, a closed curve which means that it is a separator in a planar graph, which means that any path that is here in between, it goes from this vertex to UI plus one. It has to intersect the separator, which means uh, that if we had, if this separator was small, then we would find a vertex that contains too many, too many of these paths. And the second thing that we were able to show is that uh, if the two paths intersect, then we were able to find a uh, find a curve that has that intersects at most two k vertices. So k vertices from this vertex to the intersection, and k vertices uh, on the, on the way back. And combining this, we were actually able between any pair of consecutive two. Uh, two vertices in U, we're able to find a large, large number of paths that are pairwise uh, disjoint, so that pairwise do not intersect. And this helps us to argue that if we take a path, like if we look at, uh, at these disjoint paths between each consecutive uh, way, and we look at the position of T, we're able to find a path that in each, in each part is very far from T. And now any, any VT path that uses at most K color, if you look at how it looks, so if you look at a path that is going from V to T and shares a vertex, shares a color with, with some vertex W here, then we can argue that to share this vertex, it actually has to continue, have to contain a vertex inside of this, inside of, of this, uh, this phase here, or inside of this region here. And to get to this region, it would need to intersect many of the, of the disjoint paths. And we can argue that basically between between any kind of uh, so here and here it has to contain a different color so between any two if we skip uh, two different uh, place faces then the colors have to be different that it contains uh, that this path contains there which means that if we have o of k uh, many paths that it needs to cross, then the path from V to T would need to contain more than K colors, but this cannot be the optimal one. Okay. 
and that's uh, it for for my talk so basically i tried to sketch an, an fpt algorithm which resolved the problem we left with iat uh, in our ical paper uh, there are still some interesting open questions one may be the resolving polynomial versus mprs for unit disks but also for example if we know that no obstacle intersect more than constant number of other obstacles it's still open whether it's it's polynomial or not um, like if if uh if there is a, a if every region contains only only small number of obstacles that is mp hard right this this was already because this was already for li for lines uh, for line segments uh, not intersecting in, in in free positions but there every line can intersect many other lines so we don't know what happens when uh, every obstacles can intersect only only constant number of other obstacles and also it might be interesting to to figure out whether uh, this k2 of k cubed is uh, optimal or we can get something better okay thank you for your attention Okay, let us unmute for a round of applause. Um, are there any questions for Edward? Andra? Yeah. So you were speaking about plane graph and connected obstacles, and you showed that if the obstacles are not connected, then it's hard, right? Yeah. Uh, or it's known that, that it's hard. What about if I have a general graph and connected obstacles? Could that uh, somehow? Oh, so uh, the thing is, uh, because on the play plane graph and and gen and not connected obstacles, it, it is hard. Then you can just take plane graph and add one universal vertex with all colors. Okay. Which makes yeah. all, every color connected and. Uh, it's cheating. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is cheating, but uh, yeah. So, so you would need to like. You probably could go a bit more general than just plain graphs, but you cannot have arbitrary. You you need then introduce other restrictions. Yeah. So can we just... go to some like higher order? Uh, yeah, uh, like it. It, it might be quite interesting question whether you can. You can do it on on torus or, or like yes. uh, bounded genus uh, yeah. graphs. I would I would conjecture that you can have FPT algorithm on on torus or or like fixed genus, but I didn't think about it too much to, to actually uh, know how to how to do it. Or, yeah. hmm. I would think it, it it should be possible, but I don't know. Yeah, so I was just wondering like. So it's, you was talking about uh, you you were talking about the motivation by robots moving in some environment. So, yeah. like I mean, yeah, traditionally robots were moving in, moving in two D environment, but nowadays yeah. robots are moving in in three D environment. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it becomes really much much harder in three D. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, let, let me ask once more. <laughs> so uh, uh, I was just wondering, you, you said that for you, it was interesting to think about it as a graph, but I was wondering, like, if you didn't get the graph and did, did these potatoes that you were drawing before, like, what would be the input specification for all these potatoes? like? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good good question. I didn't think about it too much, but I guess you will you will have just like a like a poly polygons basically, and uh, like you can have a, 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 a each each obstacles each obstacle uh, characterized by a kind of a union of of uh, uh, of polygons which tells you what is the kind of an outer outer phase of, of this of this obstacle and and what are the holes in this in this in this obstacle 
Yeah. But I mean, the specification of the polygon can be kind of long. Yeah, 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 yeah. In yeah, terms yeah. of so, the number of obstacles, so it might be be interesting, like to to then consider the the length of the the, the description of the obstacles can be really much larger than the number of obstacles. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it it also kind of because our our graph depends on the on the number of regions it, it, it creates. So when we have a, we can have a, just two obstacles and, and introduce uh, lots of lots of uh, regions uh, by their intersections. So um, the it, it we cannot really say that uh, without any other restrictions it is FPT in in so that it is even point like that the. Uh, our algorithm is polynomial in number of obstacles. We can only say that it's polynomial in number of regions, right? And then okay. exponential in, in number of, of uh, color or obstacles of the optimal solution. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Ondra does not have any, so we can thank our speaker once more. Um, that's it for today. Thank you for coming. Yeah.